Oh, was it? Do you know what that? I love this. Mike and I were in the same same year of college on the same course, and I suppose initially there was a bit of, sort of friendly competition between us, and quite quite often Mike would get the top mark on a project. Quite often, possibly less often, I'd get the top mark on a project. Uh, so there was a, a bit of friendly competition going on, but nothing too serious. And then, but I, I think. It, and I, and I knew Sue, and I met Stephen through through Sue. Yes, so Susan Wall was my sort of connection to the industry because I knew she'd worked on Hitchhiker and made Able Fish and that gonna be. I don't think she'd done any Doctor Who at that point. I think that that kind of happened for all of us around the same time, really. And also, but a friend of ours, Mark Mark Ayres, doing the music as well. So there was this whole little group of mates who all managed to get on the show at the same time, really. And Susan knew uh, Mark Plax as well. So, as Robert says, there was a, a, a whole new organ of us, really, and, and all working all in, and obviously not all doing the same thing. And Ian Briggs was, uh, a, you know, a, a, a great, fun with sort of character. Everybody seemed young, uh, you know, to say time. You know, it was... It was a great sort of period, actually, and, I, and, and now I think about it, 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 the number of people who did know each other, just I don't know socially or what have you, was 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 Kate Shawberry, was it? Was it? Yeah, and we were very lucky in that John Nathan Turner, and um, for all his you know foibles, no. was very generous in allowing all these 20 year olds who are coming into the business okay let's give them free reign and see what they can do and that wasn't just us in the vax department that was you know andrew cartmel as script editor and that was people like ian briggs and ben aronovich as writers you know he, he really was good okay they all seem to get on well we all seem to know what they're doing and most importantly he said to me he said it's become obvious to me that you're a fan of Doctor Who. He said, but you're not letting it get in the way of your job. And that to him was a big thing. It's like he knew that we knew John Perry and Tom Baker, that we all watched this stuff. We didn't think it would actually matter. He knew he could trust it. And there's also, I was, I was thinking, he, it, there were a lot of people who loved the show and, and, and it, there was a kind of tipping point where that actually was a bit of an advantage. I think he could see if you in, if you appeared to, to like the program, that wasn't necessarily in band team, then actually it worked quite well because you would probably give it a little bit more than perhaps someone who wasn't that bothered so much about it. Yeah. Um, it was an interesting period because at that point, I think that yeah. uh, John had been, it had been doing it for so long. And certainly hadn't gone down the steel or anything, but, that, but it, it, you had a lot of younger people. You had... Andrew Cartmel with this great new, new bit of direction. And then right at the top, someone so experienced, so you knew exactly how to facilitate everything. You really started working beautifully well. You know, really good. Just as they cancelled it. Just as they cancelled it. Yeah, unfortunately. But in, I, I always think it was a rejuvenation, I think, in effect. I, and not that it was bound before, uh, but there was definitely a rejuvenation. It felt like in the visual in the quality of what was physically presented in that point, I'm always still. And I, I was like, the three was the tears you did, it's sort of like you were at the forefront of giving that kick of the bone away. Uh, I mean, I could always speak for seeing myself as soon as you get a wonderful opportunity, as we all were. I don't keep banging the rock out with me. We were only like in our early 20s, really. We were given a lot of freedom to design things. You know, I mean, I can't imagine what it must be like working for the program now. The, but then, something like the destroyer or something, I just laid up. Well, they let me do it. They they just sort of said, "Well, actually, that's that's great. We'll go with that," you know. And um, they trusted you to do it. And and rather like I was saying to you yesterday, it was a it was a an interesting period because every uh, story had a different production team. So the feel of them were all slightly different, and the end of it. They had a there was a terrific variety of looks and an agile feel across each of them, and uh, I you know they really seemed to work well. But uh, 
Yeah, it was a magical time, really. I think, you know, if Judd and Mullen, this was Stephen last night, um, I think there's a certain amount as well of the naivety of you. If you go into this as a 20-year-old going, I think the Doctor Who Monsters, you know, from last year were crap. Regan is so much better than that. So you can launch yourself into this without the slightest inkling of what flesh constraints or time constraints or indeed your own knowledge constraints what goes, goes into you. And I remember doing Brian Fire. It was like when you do this mobile shot from the spacecraft taking off. And I was in my head, this is going to be the best mobile shot ever. I'd never done this sort of thing before professionally. So I'm a first foot in the air with a, on a chubby picket with a mobile spacecraft with parachute. On the end of it, I was about first hand fishing line. Instead of doing it the way I should have done it on steel wire. Is the steel wire doesn't stretch, but of course fishing line stretches. So I'm there up this thing and trying to lift this net, and all that's happening is that the wires are stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching, and suddenly this thing just just boing the surface. I fall, and he draws the camera and goes, "Right, got that, move him on." And it's like, no, no, this this magic shot that I decided is going to be the best thing I've ever done is to do. But and he did. The following year, you've learned, so you've got to do that sort of rookie mistake again, but you don't think, oh, maybe these old lanks who are in the department have been there for 30 years, might actually know how to pass on some of that knowledge, and they were very generous. Stan was very good at passing on knowledge. But everyone collaborated incredibly well, but it didn't take a while to learn that you didn't know everything. <laughs>